with the trade deadline um, coming up with on us on this Halloween, I feel as if it would be appropriate to talk about some potential trade rumors right here. Now, if you want to see probably the five most likely players uh, based on an SB Nation article, click on the link in the description if you're interested. And also, just to keep the link up, just in case if it um, uh, gets you to that page, um, if it doesn't send you to another tab or whatnot, I would uh, copy and paste it and then uh, put it up there in um, your new tab and whatnot, just so you can keep watching the video and all. But when it comes to SB Nation and all that, some of the top five players that they put up there were um, some um, familiar faces, as we know, um, some um, interesting players, and some really talented players that can really affect the team. So one of them was Cordy Glenn. Now, Cordy Glenn is one of these players. He's like he's a good left tackle. He signed an extension in 2016. But with a new um, coach under Sean McDermott, obviously a new system is a little bit approaching and all that. And Cordy Glenn, obviously, he's a good left tackle. Obviously, left tackles are important. But they are um, changing up the system. I think that Cordy Glenn could potentially potentially be traded to the Seattle Seahawks. Now, there are some other teams on the list that potentially you could get traded to. But I feel like the Seattle Seahawks would be uh, a good team to get traded to because, well, not only because they're a winning team, but also because they need some offensive line help here there. I think if you get Corey Glenn at that tackle position, it would be good. And also, he's a good run blocker, and I think Seattle would like really appreciate if they would um, like to run the ball. And I think if you put Corey Glenn there, it would be helpful, especially with uh, Luke Jockel's uh, injury that has just have happened. I think just having that right there would be nice. And to be honest, some um, some Buffalo Bills players have become Seattle Seahawks in the past or have um, or the other way around. Obviously, Marshawn Lynch is the big name, but Fred Jackson is also a name up there. Percy Harvin. So there's obviously some uh, familiarity right there and, this, and some similarities of how they um, kind of do their business. Now, another uh, player to look at is Marcel Darius. Now, Marcel Darius is definitely one of these players that you look at. And he obviously is a very promising, very talented defensive tackle, but he's definitely lost some of his production uh, here and there over the past uh, couple of years years here and there and I think when you look at him um, he's only 27 years old but you're looking at a really talented pass rusher and I think really anyone can really use a pass rusher but I think he could be real great I believe that I think the Saints could definitely make a move towards him because you know I mean have someone right next to Cam Joy and all that have that pass rush I think it would be real nice to have him there obviously there's a bunch of other teams that could obviously use a Marcel Darius and whatnot I, I think a, definitely a team to look at would possibly be the Titans, maybe someone right next to um, Jarrell uh, Casey. That would be pretty nice to have a, a Marcel Darius right there. Nice uh, dominant front. I think uh, Detroit Lions should potentially look at Marcel Darius. I think that's definitely a guy. But really anyone that needs a pass rushing D tackle because I think he could be good and whatnot. I think he can be a really talented player and he's only 27 years old so he still has like a barrier right there but he has lost some production so there is there is kind of an issue right there so he might not just be like he might not be a like Reggie White obviously like that great of a player but also he could still produce for you so I think Marcel Darius would be a good fit right there. I think another player who's definitely made um, news recently was Martavius Bryant. Now, Martavius Bryant is definitely a talented person. Um, last year, he was suspended uh, for an entire year for for some sort of substance abuse and whatnot. And I think that one thing for sure about uh, Martavius Bryant is he is talented. He made some sort of uh, circus catch against the Cincinnati Bengals in a playoff game uh, two years ago. So if you like those circuit catches, I think that would be um, – Obviously, something to look at right there if you like Martavis Bryant. But I think the Denver Broncos should make a play for him. Because if you look at Martavis Bryant, I think that John Elliott really likes to go with three wide receivers strong. You basically have Demaryius Thomas. Then you have Emmanuel Sanders, who's also a former Steeler. But then at the third wide receiver spot, it kind of drops out. And and I think if you look at John Elliott, he likes a player that can – that. He likes that third wide receiver, and I think Martavius Bryant is more than capable enough to fit that role. Now, the reason why Bryant is in this uh, position to potentially get traded is not only because of the suspension, but he got really upset about Juju uh, Smith-Schuster uh, obviously getting drafted, and he was very outspoken. And not only that, he um, was talking about just a recent tweet about how that Juju Smith is like nothing compared to him, that he's better than Juju. So there is that thing right there where he's not really getting along. And Juju is definitely a young gun. And so is Martavis Bryant, only 25. But 
Juju uh, Smith-Schuster, I believe, is the youngest player in the NFL. I want to say he's like 20, 21. And uh, Martavis Bryant is 25 years old, so he's still some youth right there. So I think he could definitely become a Bronco. Obviously, there's some other teams, but I definitely think the Broncos, though, because they did, they definitely have lost up the past the two games. I think if you put that depth right there at receiver, that's something John Elway really, really values. Now, another team to... Um, to that could also be looking to for a trade is the Cardinals because they just lost Carson Palmer. And I think Josh McCown could be an interesting guy out there. So let's just say if you're the Jets general manager and if you're just upset with the fact that the Jets uh, won three straight games, obviously they they lost their last two. But obviously um, Josh McCown doesn't look pretty terrible. Um, he, he's obviously a below average quarterback, but he isn't terrible. And I feel as if that the Cardinals are going to be missing Carson Palmer. They could go after Josh McCown. I think that could definitely be something right there because both Todd Bowles and Bruce Arians run very similar systems and whatnot. So I really feel as if that you could put McCown um, with the uh, Arizona Cardinals. Now, now the Cardinals could have a lot of faith in Blaine Gabbert. I think that's definitely something that could definitely play um, play a role right there. I think Bruce Arians has a lot of confidence in his ability to coach quarterbacks, but if he really wants to go veteran quarterback in McCown, he could potentially do if the Jets want to keep on tanking and whatnot, or the Jets will probably want to keep McCown simply because, well, maybe they want a guy that could, maybe the Jets are in it, maybe they're not tanking. Kind of hard to believe, but let's just bring up the potential possibility. And also, he hasn't been playing too terribly. Uh, recently. I mean, he had a four-touchdown game against the Dolphins. I know it's not the Dolphins. I'm not saying he's a great quarterback or anything, but he's not terrible. That's all I'm going to say right there. I also think another guy that's on the list is Dominic rogers Cromarty. He's definitely a guy that got suspended by his own team, the Giants. No, not the league. His team suspended for one game and all of that. And Dominic rogers Cromarty, he's a very interesting player. He's a nickel corner that's six foot two. Usually your taller cornerbacks are usually on the outside, covering the outside receiver. But no, he likes to cover the inside slot receivers and all that. And that's um, that's pretty uh, interesting right there. And I feel as if that he's definitely a playmaker. He lives a little bit up there in age. He is 31. But I definitely think a team that can go after him is the New Orleans Saints. They're the 4-2 right now. I think that they want a playmaker in the defense. And the Saints defense doesn't look too bad. I think they still need a little bit of work right there. I definitely, definitely feel as if that they go after Dominic Rogers Cromartie, guy who's been obviously the Giants have been a little bit upset about. They get a playmaker. He has seven defensive touchdowns in his career, 30 interceptions. So if you put him at that cornerback spot, they want that playmaker. They want guys to get the turnovers right there. And I think Dominic Rogers Cromartie is definitely a guy that they could go after if they're thinking about while competing. Now, another guy to look at is he hasn't been really in the rumors, but I think uh, he's worth talking about is Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, obviously, he's in a kind of on a win now team, but they just lost their starting quarterback. And when you look at Fitzgerald, he's his career is obviously he's 34 years old, so he's definitely aging here and there. So I really feel as if that Fitzgerald could uh, potentially be moved somewhere and to maybe go to a contender, maybe go to the winner. Obviously, the Broncos are definitely a possibility if they they really want uh, Larry Fitzgerald and whatnot. I think I heard rumors about the New England Patriots, but the Patriots have been ruined to get Larry Fitzgerald forever. But hey. I guess just don't rule them out for the heck of it. And I think Fitzgerald would definitely be um, could definitely be uh, useful right there. I, I doubt he would go to the Jets. I know um, Bruce Aaron and Todd Bowles do know each other. I, I, I really doubt it. And really, when you look at Fitzgerald, he does a lot of things right. I really think that anyone would love to have Fitzgerald. Um, but in, in reality, though, uh, just to put this in perspective, I really feel he's probably going to stay. But if I had to think of a team... On top of my head, it would probably be maybe the Cowboys, but uh, it's still a little bit of a stretch. I think maybe the Ravens, they need some receiver help here and there. So that's definitely a potential move that they could go after. But I, I really feel Fitzgerald might be staying, but he's been rumored too. So uh, if you want if you want to let me know what you think Larry Fitzgerald is going to be, you can comment right down below. I, I mean, he's probably staying, though. But, hey, rumor is a rumor. So. And then the next one is Jarvis Landry. Now, Jarvis Landry, I think, is a very underrated receiver. 
I think he reminds me of Odo Beckham Jr. and Julie Edelman if they um, combine themselves. Like he, they, he has Odo Beckham Jr. s kind of talent right there, but he also has like Edelman's kind of grit to him. And that's why I think I like him. But like, he has like a he has a good attitude to him. He doesn't have like a T.O. attitude, but he has a good competitive attitude. And I'm I'm really surprised if Adam Gase would uh, trade him and all that. But maybe his production might be a little bit low this season. But I think. He's worth it, and yes, it is his last year's contract. This is his last year. Um, if he does go to the team, maybe the Ravens, that they really want a rental, they might not be, be be very competitive this year. But that's definitely something that they could look at. And I think obviously Landry could go to the Broncos. I think that would definitely be good right there. Very tough guy. Um, I think if he does go to the Broncos, I think he would be a fantastic fit. And not only that, I feel like he could take on the role to be the number one receiver right there, replace the Marys and Emmanuel and all of that. So I think Jarvis Landry is definitely on the market here and there. And some other guys that could be um, out there. I mean, James White, if you really want a, a receiving back and whatnot, he could be out there on the market right here and there. I think that's definitely something to uh, look at. I think the Eagles could make a trade. I know there's some – they might need some cornerback help, but I'm trying to think of cornerbacks that might be on the trading block. Obviously, Don McRogers, Kamari, but that's a that's a division rival. So I, it's going to be kind of hard to make a trade right there. I definitely feel as if that if they really want to make a trade – I'm not sure how Troy Waynes is doing in uh, Minnesota. I don't think he's a bad cornerback at all, but I think that if they want to make a play for um, – Trey Waynes, I think they should uh, go for it if they really want to. I think that this Eagles team, it's the best team in football right now. No question in my mind. Best team in football. I definitely feel as if that, that could be uh, a potential location for Trey Waynes if he ever gets shipped somewhere. And to be honest, when it comes to the Eagles, I definitely think that they should execute a trade deadline. I'm not really sure um, who that they're going to get specifically, but I definitely look at corners their weak spot. Other than that, they really don't have too many weak spots, to be honest with you. I mean, Carson Wentz looks really good. I mean, he's playing football right now as they film this video. I think he, he's, he's surprisingly elusive, and more importantly, he's actually a quality quarterback. I mean, Zach Ertz, I think he's overrated. Click at the link in the description for that video if you're interested, of course. But um, obviously, he's still a good tight end. And then they have some receiver. I mean, Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, Torrey Smith. I mean, they could use an upgrade. Nelson Aguilar. But I think they've been producing. But hey, if the receiver's on the market, I mean, all power to them. Um, running back off situation, I think it's fine. I think Luke Garrett Blunt has actually done well for them. I think Darren Sproles is a... Is a one of the bit more underrated like running backs in the league, not many people talk about. Not on defense, their front seven stack, their safeties are good. And then they just made a trade for a cornerback. But hey, if they want to make them if they want to go out there and earn a cornerback, then props to them, props to them if they want to. And that can really stack them up. And I think the Eagles could potentially get a bye um this year in the playoffs. And obviously I think they're the best team in football. But other than that though, that these are some things I mentioned about the trade deadline and whatnot. Uh if you thought um Share your thoughts down below in the comment section if you're interested. If you heard any other trade rumors that some player might go here or some player might go there, yeah, um, you you put them down there. You put them out there. Like you can report it and all that. Obviously, if a trade does happen, I will report it. But if you want to comment something about a rumor that's happening between now and the trade deadline, power to you. But overall, uh, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.